I think when we talk about adapting and we talk about changing the plan, for some reason it feels like such a failure. And maybe it's because we have so much pride in the knowledge we have or we thought we had. And then when that gets turned on its head, we all of a sudden don't feel like we have that knowledge anymore. Well, I'm here to tell you it's been a tough garden season and absolutely nothing has gone to plan here over at Seed to Plate. I was planning on writing my cookbook this year and photographing it out of my garden, but that requires things to grow, which has not happened. And really at the end of the day, life is gonna throw us curveballs and challenges, and trust me, I've been through a lot in life and I certainly know that, but for some reason, gardening feels like that thing that can never shake me. And that has been quite disproven this year. And I'm feeling pretty shaken to my core because really at the end of the day, that's what gardening is for me, is it's an expression of my heart and soul. And so to feel like that is in question or anything like that, it feels really hard, (laughs) much harder than I was expecting. Uh, I hope the title of this video wasn't too clickbaity. Um, But I think it is so important as a gardener and also just as a human being in this world that demands more and more of us every day to uh, know know when to give up and know when it's okay to give up. And um, there's a few things that kind of led to me, quote unquote, giving up, right? And some of them are what I already talked about with weather and and pest pressure and all of that but a lot of a lot of the other things that led to me wanting to make a video like this is that we are just expected to be and do so much in this world we're expected to you know take care of our people and work full time and exercise and eat healthy and have a social circle and have a hobby and be doing something for your mental health and um, it's just a lot. The world asks a lot of us on any given day and sometimes we just can't do it all. Oftentimes we can't do it all and so really for these gardens, for this season of life, um, I need something easier and I need, and that's okay (laughs) by the way, that's fine. Um, one of the biggest, um, one of the biggest values I have for Seed to Plate is being honest and being relatable. And the reality is, honestly, I'm not a farmer. I'm not. I'm a hobby gardener and gardening brings me joy. And right now it's just bringing me stress. (laughs) and sadness and complete overwhelm. So, that's why we're gonna make a pretty hard pivot for the rest of the summer gardening season. And I just want you to know, I think, I know I grew up in a culture and in a, um, a time where it was like, don't lose, don't give up don't do this, don't do this, you know, like, you have to win and grind and you have to be the best and, oh my god, it's just exhausting. (laughs) And I just, sometimes things just don't work. That's okay. Sometimes things just don't work out and you know what? I think when you can admit that things aren't working for you and you can give them up and let them go and then move on to something that is working for you, To me, that actually shows more strength than continuing to do something that just is not working. So, I'm gonna tell you about the rest of the summer garden plan. Um, And we'll end up in the fall. I also will be backing up on uploading, so we're gonna go back to just once a week instead of two to three times a week. 
and I might even take some weeks off. I try when it's the heat of the summer and everything's really difficult to grow, I take time off and then in the winter I take about a month off. So if you're seeing less from me, just know that everything's okay. It's a, it's a hard, hot season and I just have to back off of some things sometimes. So let's talk about what's in store for the community plot and then we'll run over to the backyard garden and we'll talk about what is next for there. I also wanna talk about things that would have made this gardening season much easier um, and less, less stressful, if you will. So we're gonna talk about all of that stuff in this video, but I just want you to know it's okay to quote unquote give up and honestly giving something up that isn't working for you is really more of a strength in my opinion. Okay. So we're gonna start with the tomato beds. So these were my determinate tomato beds. You can see they are absolutely full of weeds, um, which is extremely normal this time of year. I do not know how these weeds survive this heat, but it's fine. So this tomato bed, I already pretty much chopped all the plants down. I stopped watering everything so it would die off. And these two tomato beds, I did the same thing. I've stopped watering them completely. They're not worth it. I've gotten my crop from them, like we're done here. So what's in store for these beds is I partially inherited this plot um, as my second plot and I was sharing it with one of my other gardeners. Um, they are moving soon, so I will inherit the whole second plot. Um, and so really what I need to be focused on for the next couple of months is getting things cleaned up. So in the next month, I'll be getting all of the plants pulled out, all of the weeds pulled out, and then I'm actually gonna be cover cropping. So I think I'm gonna plant this bed with black-eyed peas to kind of fix some of the nutrients because before we started planting in this plot, um, it wasn't very well taken care of. Whereas I've been uh, fixing this soil for three years, this is kind of newer soil. So that's what we're gonna be doing with this bed is we're gonna be cover cropping with black-eyed peas. And now my main garden plot, the zinnias are still looking pretty good, but the actual flowers are just, they're struggling, it's hot. But I mean, they're still growing, so that's a good sign. So my okra, my okra did not do well. Um, so this okra, I'm going to try and reseed it, um, but we'll see how that goes. Um, I didn't soak my okra seeds this year, which was a mistake. Um, again, zinnias doing great, random sunflower, I'm leaving it. Um, but this middle section is an absolute disaster. <laughs> Um, so this all needs to be like weeded, pulled, remulched, all the things. And then what's gonna be in store for this middle section of this plot is actually going to be sweet potatoes. So my sweet potato slips are still growing. I need to root the actual slips still. Um, so by the time I get all of that done, they'll be ready to plant in the ground in this section and then we'll have sweet potatoes. And then over here we have our watermelon plant that finally looks like it's starting to really do well. It kind of took a while to really kind of settle in, but it looks like it's starting to pop off, which is great. So I'm actually gonna leave this whole entire half of the plot just for the watermelon. And then this is garlic that I don't even know what happened, but it's getting pulled because yeah, I'm not really sure what happened there, if I'm being really honest. So that is the plan for this garden. I will show you uh, the whole process um, as we kind of go through this so that you all can see it. Um, because again, we're all in this together. Like, we all have quote unquote failed gardens. We all have different, you know, life situations. So um, this is all probably gonna take me a couple of weeks, by the way, because I just <laughs> have not been home. So. That is the plan for this garden. Tomato season is done, but it doesn't mean we're growing, we're done growing tomatoes this year. So let's go see the backyard. Okay guys, so let's talk about what's destined for the backyard garden. So we've installed our soaker hose and I can't believe how much relief I like already feel, <laughs> which sounds kind of crazy. Um, so the plan for the rest of the summer for this backyard garden. I actually put a poll on my Instagram, which like plug my Instagram, what brick grows. Um, I'm not on there all the time, but I am on there sometimes. And I said, should I plant a metric buttload of sunflowers or should I do fall tomatoes? One of my sweet friends 
Simple Sanctuary, she said, why don't you do both? And she's right. <laughs> why don't I do both? So today on the summer solstice, we are going to be direct sowing sunflowers. Sunflowers are my absolute favorite thing to grow. I typically don't tend to grow them while I'm growing tomatoes because uh, it acts as a trap crop for leaf-footed bugs, which I don't like, but I do love sunflowers. Uh, I mostly don't like the leaf-footed bugs because they suck all the juice out of your tomatoes. Um, but I have a variety of sunflowers that I'm gonna be throwing out here, uh, direct seeding. Um, some of them are dwarfs, so they'll go in the, more in the front, and some of them are the big guys, so they'll go more in the back. Um, so we have our teddy bear dwarf sunflowers. These will definitely go in the front. We have an heirloom variety mix, vanilla ice. We have chocolate. Uh, Zohar sunflowers, these are more for cutting, so these will go in the front. And then we have lemon queen. This is like your standard big sunflower. We have chocolate cherry. These are a really, really deep one. We have royal rouge. We have a few other ones that I don't remember what they look like. We have a lot of sunflowers. Like I said, sunflowers are like one of my favorite things to grow uh, for beauty, especially in the summer. So um, that is what is destined for the backyard. And then we're actually gonna try for fall tomatoes. So I will be starting seeds yet again. <laughs> for my heirloom varieties to see if we can have some success. And one of the things um, that sunflowers are actually really good for is a quote unquote soil conditioner. If you have ever grown a sunflower and tried to pull that sucker up by the roots, it's got some real deep roots. And so the reason it's called a soil conditioner is because it actually breaks up a lot of that earth, which right now, um, as I was putting the stakes in for the soaker hose, the ground doesn't seem crazy hard or super dry. Um, but all the plants are just really struggling. So I really want um, a plant that's gonna really get into that soil and really break it up a lot so that when I go to plant my tomatoes in the fall, they'll be ready to go. Um, so hopefully this is kind of a, a learning lesson for everybody watching that like sometimes you just gotta pivot uh, and that's what I'm doing right now is pivoting. <laughs> Clearly I'm not very happy about it, but we're doing it. And for the grow bags and that um, that big net, I think I'm actually going to do red ripper beans, red runner beans, something like that. Um, they're supposed to do really well in the heat. So, um, you know, I just really wanted to make this video. I know it seemed kind of dramatic, but um, I think I'm, I'm in a season of life where I kind of feel defeated on all fronts. That feeling of defeat feels heavy. Um, and I just really asked myself last week, why am I trying to hold on to this plan that clearly is not working? <laughs> and I didn't have an answer. Um, and it kind of reminded me of uh, when I used to live in Ohio uh, six years ago before I moved to Texas, I was not feeling successful in life and I was feeling very trapped and it just wasn't working. And so I moved. I, I adapted and I did something about it and now I'm thriving here in Texas so there's always a lesson of adaptability in situations like this um, and sometimes you just have to find the lesson <laughs> so as always thanks so much for watching happy gardening we'll see you next time <laughs>